Hi guys, well it is another day. I did get uh, three coats of seasoning on this waffle iron with grapeseed oil. So instead of going out and lighting the wood stove and spending all that time out there freezing while I'm waiting, uh, I'm just going to use the waffle, waffle iron on um, the steel plate that I mentioned that we got. We got that because some of the little pots that we have tip when they're on the edge of here. Um, so we got the steel plate, I think at PV Mart. Um, and I'm just going to sit this on here so that it, uh, you know, heats up evenly. And I'm really happy. This is still a little rough looking in here, but it's nice and shiny and smooth. And I don't think this stuff will stick. This um, one was a little bit sticky and I put it in the, uh, the handles actually came off. Um, so we just put them back on. So I ended up putting it in the oven at 350 a couple of times. So again, you basically will, when it's ready to turn, you just um, turn it on that part that's like a ball. So I'll have to get good at this, of course, with some practice. But I made a double batch. I put my baking soda in last because um, once the baking soda hits the liquid, it starts to activate. So um, by the time you get to the end of the bowl, it might not be so good, but um, this is nice and bubbly now. And I'm gonna try this out, get this heated up really good. And um, I also like the fact that inside, this is really nice and smooth and feels like a non-stick pan. So in all the grooves and everything. So we'll see what happens. Um, I might put a little bit more grapeseed oil in as we're going along and uh, hopefully these won't stick. should mention that this is actually a sourdough recipe too and um, these needed to be freshened up anyway with some sugar so I took a cup out of each one again. Uh, the reason these jars are so big is because when you mix in the warm water with the sugar and the flour and freshen it, it goes up to here again. You can see the level on the jar. I made big batches so that I could do like four to eight loaves of bread at a time and always have sourdough starter. So um, if anybody wants the recipe, uh, this is the recipe for the st star starter and I'm using the waffle recipe that goes with it. So I've decided because it is uh, so bumpy, I'm just gonna give it a little spray with some uh, cooking spray and I would prefer coconut. I'm not too sure about spraying this with the propane stove though, that's the only thing I'm worried about, but <laughs> hopefully don't blow myself up. Propane still scares me a little bit, I've gotten used to it, but um, aerosols, not too sure. Now I will transfer this. whisk to my jars so that I can whisk in the flour and sugar into the new starter. Get this nice and hot. really nice and thick. Now I've put the camera over there because the light from the door, coming in from the door, was bothering me. Now... Hopefully this won't bring over too much. Bring it over here. So. Now I'll just... I added a little bit, a little scoop extra, and I probably shouldn't have. Hmm. So you can see how nice and bubbly this is now. 
I've added the flour and water to this one. And you can see how it's starting to bubble. You always add a teaspoon of sugar when you do this. And I've got to add the water for this one now. Well, it hasn't overflowed and I can sort of hear it sizzling. I can see inside the little crack and it looks like it's getting brown on the bottom. So I think I'm going to flip this. I think the next one I might time it on each side and see if that helps me to know how much to do on each side. This mix has gone way more bubbly this time. I put less milk in this time, so I found the batter a little too thin, so you might have to play with that a little bit. Well, that's the first one. <laughs> that's not good at all. Uh, I'm going to pick this out and we'll see if I can start again. Okay, I am calling the first batch Epic Fail. So instead of, I think I was a little too timid with the spray, like I said, I don't like spraying those aerosols over the flames. So I have gotten a little bit, a little dish of um, grapeseed oil and I've brushed both of these with the grapeseed oil really well because this brush gets in all the little grooves. So I'm going to try this again, batch number two, with the grapeseed oil on both. One stuck really badly and one not too bad at all, so hopefully this will make the second batch, we might starve to death waiting for a waffle around here. Okay, let's try this again. It's pretty hot. My bubbles are going down in my mix, so that doesn't make me happy either. All this fiddling around. scoop in there. Well, it's not overflowing. You can actually see where the batter is rising and pushing these plates apart. So that's a good sign, I guess. Okay, I've done four minutes, so I'm going to flip it over and do four minutes on this side. Let's see what happens. It's puffing out a little bit here on the sides. I can hear it sizzling, too. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera. I'm going to be really annoyed if this one sticks, too. <laughs> now this one has stuck, too, but not as badly. So I guess I'm just going to have to be patient, and you all know I'm not very good at that. Um, and I don't know if I'm cooking it too long. But of course, this will all go to the chickens. There isn't a scrap of anything that gets wasted in here anymore because it all goes to the chickens. But I'm going to have to pick all this out again. Um, not sure. And I'm hungry. So I just wanted to make a note for you folks. This I'm new at cast iron cooking, but I had this pan seasoned perfectly. I made the exact same pancake mix in this. Didn't stick in any way whatsoever. It was like a non-stick pan. Now I put a coat of the um, grapeseed oil on this too, you know, because of the channel that we watched, he said to do that, and look at my pancakes. So I'm not happy, I'm cleaning this off, and I'm going back to my avocado oil. Okay, this is attempt number three, and I'm switching to avocado oil. So this is try number three. Now I've coated it with avocado oil this time. We'll see how this goes. And I've turned the heat down to medium. I'm not sure if maybe the heat was too high. Maybe that was the problem. Anybody can let me know.
that's experienced with these. Any help is appreciated. So I'd call that a success. It didn't stick on this side. Now it still looks too well cooked to me. I turned the heat down to medium. So I think I'm gonna, because these um, off-grid propane stoves get so hot, the burners get so hot, um, the little simmer one, we cannot get to simmer. It still boils. Doesn't matter how low we turn it. So I'm going to do another batch and this was av avocado oil this time. So you can see there's nothing stuck in the grooves. We'll see if the other side uh, comes free as easily. But um, that's certainly a million times better than... Now this is sticking a little bit on this side. So... I will pick this out of here and give it to the chickens and do another batch with avocado oil and turn the heat rate down to low. So I'm heating up the waffle iron for the fourth time. Chris looked online and it said that you're supposed to have it about 350 degrees so I think I did have it too hot. I had turned the heat down but this time I'm going to heat it up and turn the heat rate down to low and see what happens. So I've got it heating up. we got one of these little guns that you point at whatever you want. And if I point it at, let's see if I can see this for the lighting, yeah, 136 for the top. Which you can see the little red beam. That's 300, that's heated up just a lot, a lot in the last couple of minutes. But when I open this up, see if I can get this to stand without falling. Well, that's almost 300 now. It's heating up really quick. So now it says it's 364. So I'm going to put, and of course this batter is, most of the bubbles have gone, so it's not great, but um, this is kind of an experiment anyway. So I'm just going to keep doing it. Turn the heat right down low and see how long it takes. Now I have another one that didn't stick on this side. So I noticed with the last time, this one says 981 on this side, and that's the side that didn't stick last time. On the other side, it says 999, and that side stuck the last time, and it's the same side that stuck this time. So I'm going to see if I can get it out a little better than last time. And, um, oh, this little nail keeps coming out now. I don't know where it is. Shoot. I'm going to, I think we might put a screw in there. don't want it falling when I'm... Oh, there's the little nail in the waffle. Mm. these things are, yeah, see it's not holding together the way I would like it to, so I'm just going to put that to the side. I don't want it falling because my impulse is going to be to grab it, and I don't have enough oven mitt on. Oh, I've got the one that has 9.99 marked on it on the bottom. So I didn't with the first three. I didn't um, make note of that because I didn't realize one was going to stick worse than the other. So that's number five in. Let's see what happens this time. Ta -da! Look at that. Now let's see if it. Now this is the 9.99 side. So I'm going to flip it over and see if, hey, let's see if this side comes out. 
Oh my goodness, now it's the other side that's sticking. Oh, this side's not cooked as much. Okay. So let's flip it back over. Leave it a bit. Now this time, $9.99 didn't stick. And $9.81 did. And again, just in the center. So I'm wondering, last time I uh, made sure I put $9.99 on the bottom. So I don't know if it's the one that I pour the batter into that's not sticking and the one that's on the top is sticking. I really don't know. Gotta keep experimenting and figure it out. This is batch number six and I'm running out of batter. This is higher than 350 degrees now, so I've turned it down. Ooh. I think that's going to overflow a bit. So again, the one that was on the bottom did not stick at all. And this is getting better. It's only the very center. Oh! That looks like it might come out. Let's see if I can get the whole thing out. I'm a little worried about trying to stand that up. <gasps> yeah, it's kind of floppy. Look at that. And they all came out as little individual hearts. Isn't that cute? So a tiny little bit there that stuck. Yeehaw! Might just be the seasoning getting better as I do each batch. But yeah, those came out perfect. Again, the, the side that it goes in first seems to be a little, it's a little burnt to me. But, um, yeah, keep trying. I'll use the rest of the batter up, and if anything, it's just going to season the pan more. Um, putting more oil on and doing more hearts. Aren't they cute? Look at that. i got to fix the lighting on this camera. So again, I switched them. This was on the bottom to start and didn't stick at all to so the bottom. Whatever one is on the bottom is not sticking at all. And look at that. Those, they're still just cooked too much for me though. So I'm gonna have to play with the temperature. And I think that little temperature gun will be good for keeping an eye on the heat on the top of the wood stove too. Now, that time I got one little crumb there, that's it and absolutely nothing stuck to either side. So that's pretty exciting. Yeehaw! That only took um, seven batches. I've got enough left to do one more, so I'm going to do it again just to keep using it and it'll just be seasoned better by doing that. Didn't stick on that side again. different pancake mix. This was my sourdough mix and I might try a different one next time. So not even a crumb stuck to either one this time. I have a tiny bit of batter I'm going to scrape out of the bottom of the bowl um, because I think again using it more, oiling it each time is seasoning it better. And I would like next time to actually get more waffles for my belly. Last one. Didn't have enough to fill that, but oh, look at that. Came right off. Don't know whether I wasn't putting enough oil in the center, like where the points are or not, but again, not one crumb stuck in there anywhere. I'm going to put some more avocado oil on these and maybe put them, the, them in the oven with some other stuff to um, heat again at 350. I will take the little handles off again. But these will all go to the chickens. These are kind of dry. Um, <laughs> so 
Uh, the other thing is I'm going to have to relearn how to do this because I do find it very fiddly trying to adjust the heat. Um, and I suspect this is actually going to be easier to do on the wood stove. So um, when the weather's a little bit nicer, well, it actually warmed up to minus 5 today. It's been, you know, minus 30 again, then minus 20, and today was minus 5. So the chickens were outside. They were really happy to get outside. And um, I think this is going to be a little less fiddly, actually, with the wood stove. Um, because you just kind of move it to a different spot, unless I put it right over the ring in the fire. And then I might have to uh, learn how to adjust. As, you know, you don't want roaring flames coming up um, to the bottom of it. You just want some nice hot coals so you get a consistent temperature. So that'll be another learning experience, um, getting used to doing that on the uh, wood stove. But I'm pretty happy. It was really horrible. Oh, look at this lighting again. It was really horrible. Uh, the first couple of batches having to pick it all off and really annoying, but um, pretty happy with the last four or five batches. They didn't stick at all. So now it should be seasoned pretty well because I did three coats of seasoning before even trying this. And um, again, tried the spray, tried uh, grapeseed oil, and I am definitely sticking with avocado oil, pardon the pun. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with this. And uh, next time, hopefully I'll try it on the wood stove. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this video with your family and friends. And we'll see you next time.